Uh, we do have a few announcements for you uh, here this morning. First off, we just want to welcome all of you again here. You'll take those black fellowship pads in the first chair of each row, and you're visiting with us, and you'd like us to have a record of that. You can put your information in there. And then if there's something you would like prayer for, if you will put that in there, we will see that and pray for that then this week. Uh, a reminder then, too, for offerings, if you have that, you can put that in the uh, plate at the back of the sanctuary on the table there. And then also today, the first Sunday of the month, first Sunday of a new year as well here, it is a communion Sunday. So I just want to remind you, if you did not pick up your communion elements uh, when you came in, be sure and get them in the back there. Uh, pick those up. And you may have already noticed, if you got it there, we've got our new style of communion cup. Uh, it's actually, a, it's a bit of a transition one, but it's, uh, it is going to be much easier to open and much quieter too. And uh, someone asked, where'd you find this? I said, yes, I googled quiet, easy to open communion cups, you know, it, but no, actually, no, someone had visited another church and had mentioned that the, what they saw. They really, you know, so I had to check these things out. So I think you're going to like those a lot better. The bread actually tastes like bread and the juice tastes like juice, you know, so bread instead of like styrofoam, you know, so that's good. And juice that, you know, it's got a little bit of a bite to it, you know, so it's like, all right, this is real juice here. So uh, anyway, so I think you will like that then. So be sure and get those then if you, if you didn't pick one up already. Uh, also, because it is a communion Sunday, we uh, will have a plate at the back of the church at the end of the service for our fellowship offering. If you'd like to put something in there, our fellowship offering is what we use to help people who are in need uh, here in our church family or sometimes in the community as well. So if you'd like to contribute to that, that will be available then at the end of the service then. Uh, also then uh, today is our Christmas season brunch uh, that will follow our worship service. Uh, I know you're going to be horribly disappointed. Our service is going to be a little shorter than usual this morning. You know, I'm going to I'm going to whittle the sermon down to about two hours instead of three, and uh, no, it's going to be a little bit a little bit shorter uh, here today. And we'll dismiss from here then, and we'll go in and we'll celebrate uh, celebrate our, our our Lord and this new year here with our brunch then in the family center then. Uh, also then, uh, this Thursday coming up, our board meeting, if there's something you'd like the board to know about or discuss, talk with Matt Hoffman, and we can get that on our agenda then. Uh, next Sunday, men's and women's groups at 9 a.m. will meet, and uh, Don Vino is going to be our speaker next Sunday. Right, Don? I think we talked about that, right? I, I hope so. So, yeah. The Jolly Old Nicolaitans, you like that? Who knows that reference, okay? Who's that? Yeah, okay, very good. So, yeah, so uh, we're looking forward to that then. So, yeah, so next Sunday is, uh, uh, you know, after all this exhausting 15-minute sermon from today, I'm going to need a break, you know. So Don will, Don will preach then next Sunday. So thank you for doing that then, Don. Uh, also then... Uh, who, would, who needs to get, no, you, I shouldn't ask for a, raise of, a raising of hands here, but if you would like to get your finances in order, there may be one or two of us that you know, could benefit from that. Uh, you're going to have that opportunity starting next Sunday, January 8th, 5 p.m. will be a study group, a Money Life study group on that. If you'd like some more information on that, talk to Rachel Northern. She can get you set up then uh, with that. Uh, as I said, we will have that funeral from Myron Batdorf on Tuesday, January 10th at 11 a.m. at the Justin's Wonder Lake Funeral Home. Uh, the Winter Wonderland Couples Night coming up January. We got a boatload of announcements here. Do I? I said it was going to be a shorter service, and I'm not so sure about this now. But yes, Linda. Ah, we're moving it to the funeral for Myron is being moved to McHenry, the Justin's McHenry Funeral Home. It sounds like. You're hearing about this, and I haven't heard anything about this. What's going on here? I tell you. So, I guess I'm going to show up at the wrong place. You know. So, okay. All right. So, uh, so plan on the wonder. Or plan on the McHenry Justin's McHenry funeral home there for that. 
Um, so the Winter Wonderland Couples Night coming up Saturday, January 14th. Uh, food, fun, fellowship. If you are interested and you'd like to be a part of that, uh, see Katrine. She can give you more information, and, and there is a ticket. You need to have tickets for that then as well. Uh, also, just, just want to remind you on a new year here, uh, we do have a, a ministry available here in the church for recovery uh, for folks struggling with addictions. Uh, that is on Monday nights called Proclaim Recovery, Mondays at 6.30 p.m. If you'd like a little more information about that, you can speak with Fred Dozier about that. And also just want to remind you too, some of you already take advantage of this, uh, but we do have a resource called Right Now Media. It's been described as like the Netflix of Christian discipleship resources, video teaching resources. Our church has an account with them. If you're interested, uh, talk to me, uh, give me your email address, and I will send you a link then for that so you can have free access then to that. So those are our announcements for today. With that, Jerry, Robin, would you lead us in musical worship, please? Yes, we Thank would you. love to. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <clears throat> I'm still warming up my voice. Please stand as we begin our service, as we begin our, our first day of the new year in worship together. Our verse, for, a verse of the day is in 2 Corinthians uh, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come, and we have an opportunity today to start new. And I just want to encourage you as we worship. This first song is just an invitation. Sometimes we feel like um, sometimes we feel like we have to have everything right and everything perfect before we can come to God. And God doesn't ask us to clean ourselves up. He He wants to be the one to do the cleanup in our hearts and our lives. So I want to encourage you, no matter what you've been wrestling with, no matter what you've been um, fighting or, or, or wrestling with, just you know you can come to God as you are. And we want this song to be this, this, this prayer that says, Oh, come all you unfaithful and find hope. Oh, come, all you unfaithful, come, weak and unstable, come, know you are not alone. Oh, come, barren and waiting ones, weary of praying, come. See what your God has done. Christ is born. Christ is born. Christ is born for you. Oh, Unspoken, come taste of his perfect love. Oh, come guilty and hiding ones, there is no need to run. See what your God has done. Christ is born, Christ is born, Christ is born for you. He is the Lamb who was given, slain for our pardon, His promise is for those who believe, he is the Lamb who was given, slain for our pardon. His promise is peace for those who believe. So come, though you 
have nothing come he is the offering come see what your god has done christ is born christ is born christ is born for you Christ is born Christ is born Christ is born for you When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's a worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it when it's all about you it's all about you jesus king of endless world no one could express how much you deserve though i'm weak and poor all i have is yours every single breath i'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required i search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it's all about you lord it's all about you jesus i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made, and it's all about you, Lord, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you Lord it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I've made and it's all about you Lord it's all about you Jesus yes Lord God praise you Lord we 
give you glory. On this first day of the year, we give you praise and glory from our hearts and our voices. Love you, Lord. We love you. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone is solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still. When striving cease, when comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, Fullness in God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin. On him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine. Bought with the precious blood of Christ. You may be seated. We'll do communion at this point in time. Communion is a time of celebration. It's a time of remembrance. It's a time of reflecting upon the price that Jesus paid for the forgiveness of our sins and the gift of eternal life. We practice in our church an open communion, which means that it's open to all believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. You do not have to be a member here to participate. But if your faith is in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin and the gift of life, you're welcome to participate with us in receiving these elements in remembrance. I want to read a scripture passage that uh, I always like to read on New Year's Day. It's, it's a good thing to read any day of the year. But I always like this, especially on New Year's Day, when we're thinking about the past year, we're remembering things, and maybe there's some things we know that we need to let go of. Maybe there's some things we need to confess and get that right, and endeavor in this new year then to look forward to what Christ has for us in store in the new year. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul is discussing some of the advantages, the religious or spiritual advantages that he had in life, which actually were no advantage of all, because he was apart from Christ. He did not know Christ. And even those religious advantages that he had could actually be a detriment for him that kept him from Christ. And so he's decided then that all of those things, well, that is garbage compared to the surpassing value of knowing Christ. So this is what he says in Philippians 3, verse 7. For whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. 
Indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings becoming like him in his death that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So on this New Year's Day, let us endeavor to forget what lies behind. That doesn't mean we forget the lessons, valuable lessons we have learned, or I hope we've learned from that, but we forget those things and press forward to that goal, which is what? Which is greater and increasing knowledge, knowing Christ Jesus our Lord, that personal intimate relationship with him, and that goal then of being conformed more and more to his likeness, to his image. And that be our goal for all of us here today in this new year, is to know him better, to be conformed more and more to his image. And yes, even to enter into his sufferings, identifying with him. And sometimes the, the painful things that that means to be a follower of Jesus. But the reward and the effort that we make for it is eternal and is eternally rewarded. So as let's take a few moments and let's quiet our hearts. Let's, let's endeavor to forget the past and to press forward to what lies ahead. Knowing we can do this because Jesus has given himself. His sacrifice has forgiven us through our faith in him. We have forgiveness of sins, but we also have the gift of righteousness, perfect holiness through faith in him. Let's pray. Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. They were celebrating the Passover meal. He took bread and he gave it to them. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And later that night after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Would you stand as we pray? Lord, we are thankful for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We are thankful that he humbled himself that he left behind the glory and the honor that was justly due him. Lay aside that privilege, humbled himself, and was born into this world, took on human flesh as a helpless babe in a manger. As he grew up though, Lord, he perfectly fulfilled, obeyed your law for us on our behalf and then willingly gave his life on the cross, taking on the judgment, the punishment for our sins was laid upon him. He who knew no sin became sin in order that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 
So we thank you, Lord, that through faith in him and his life, his death, his resurrection, his forgiveness of sin, is the gift of perfect righteousness, is the hope of eternal life and the resurrection of the body, of eternal reward, of a new heaven and a new earth. We thank you, Lord, for this blessed hope. And we entrust ourselves to you in this new year, Lord. Help us to forget what lies behind and to press forward to what lies ahead in order that his name might be honored and glorified in us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry till final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I stand. Yes, Lord, we stand boldly because of you and what Christ has done. We will wait upon your return. We anxiously await for your return, O Lord. But until then, empower us to do your will, to know you more. Receive our worship and these songs and these prayers as an act of our will, a decision that we've made to bring praise and glory to you. Receive them as we've intended, O oh Lord. And I pray, Lord, now that our hearts are prepared to hear from your word as we start this new year. Teach us and give us a fresh new understanding of who you are and how we could be a blessing to others in your name. So we give you thanks and praise for this time now. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We'll continue with our service. Today's New Year's Day, as you know, and uh, as I mentioned during our communion celebration there, I really love New Year's Day because I like to take this time then just to reflect on the past year, to reflect on the many good things, the many examples of God's grace and faithfulness over the past years. But it's also, though, an opportunity then to take some time to think about maybe those things that we need to put behind us, to confess I love that feeling of a New Year's Day, of a, that, that sense of a clean slate and of fresh possibilities. And so I like to take some time then on New Year's Day to go over these things in my mind and then to pray for the new year and to dedicate myself anew to God's purposes in my life and our church. And I'd like all of us then to do that here today, to take some time to reflect on God's goodness and faithfulness to you over the past year. But also in those, not that just is, is faithfulness in the, in the good times, but in the hard times too. And how, the, how we have hope in those things, in those hard times as well. And then to perhaps there's uh, something that needs to be confessed, admitted before God, and forsaken then. And to dedicate ourselves then anew to God's purpose in your life. Dedicate our church then to God's purposes in this church, in this community then, in the new year. So I want to spend just a little bit of time here this morning in a scripture passage from Joshua chapter 24. It's Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 through 15. And my question is, will you serve the Lord? Will you serve the Lord? And here is the key thought I want us to take away today. As we begin a new year, let us then resolve to put away unworthy affections and serve the Lord alone. Let us resolve to put away 
unworthy affections and serve the Lord alone. As I said, we'll be looking at Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. But before we do that, a little context here. Uh, God had brought his people, Israel, out of slavery in Egypt. Uh, he had done this mighty miracle for them in the crossing of the Red Sea when they crossed on dry ground. He gave them the law at Sinai. He promised them a life, a good life of blessing in the promised land, in the land that he would give them. And of course, all went well from there, right? No. Why? It did not go so well. Why? Because of unbelief. Unbelief and compromise with pagan idolatry. Unbelief in what God had said and compromise from pagan idolatry, from the influences around them then. Now, of course, we would never do that, right? We have seen how God has faithfully blessed us, the hope that we have in him, but we would never compromise with influences around us, would we? Right? We would never be unbelieving in some way, would we? Now, the reality is, is we can be very much like those people then, couldn't we? We are all the people of God, and uh, we, like them, sometimes are unbelieving, or we compromise then with idolatry, the influences around of us. So because of their unbelief, because of that compromise with pagan idolatry, as a consequence for that, then they wandered in the desert for 40 years. And that generation died off. Moses died. But then God gave Joshua leadership over his people. And under Joshua, then he would bring them into the promised land. Now, God gave them victory over their enemies, and they took much of the promised land under the leadership of Joshua. But there was still more work to do. And truth be told, they had not always been faithful to God. They still had compromised as well then. But now Joshua was nearing the end of his life, and he is challenging the people then to put away the idols of their forefathers and to serve the Lord wholeheartedly. Who would they serve? He challenged them to choose, choose that day. Who would they serve? So I would ask us, who will we serve? Who will you serve? Who will you choose to serve this day? Let's look at Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. Joshua is speaking here, and he says, So fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly, Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. So I'd ask you, will you serve the Lord? Will you serve the Lord today? First, we see the fear of the Lord. Joshua tells them, so fear the Lord, fear the Lord. So I'd like to just to reflect for a little bit on what that means to fear the Lord. What is biblical fear of the Lord? You know, it is often described as a deep and profound fear reverence and awe and respect for God. And that's true. It is that. It is a deeply profound awe. It's a deeply profound respect for God, for who God is, as the almighty sovereign Lord of the universe, the creator of all, the moral lawgiver of the universe, who is due all of our affection and our obedience, our trust. It is that. But I think what is sometimes left out in that is there is an element, though, of, a, of a biblical fear is recognizing that because God is holy and because he is just, he will judge sin. And we, if we've put our trust in Christ, do we need to fear the eternal consequences of sin and death? No, we don't. Because we have been delivered forever from that in Christ, haven't we? 
But should we fear the consequences of willful sin and disobedience in our life? Because God, yes, we should, right? So God is to be awesomely respected and worshipped. But they're fearing the Lord, though, is recognizing there are serious consequences sometimes for our failure then and our, and our disobedience then to him. So fear of the Lord is awe and respect, but it's recognizing, though, that sin brings consequences into our lives. Now, I am so thankful for God's grace and God's mercy but grace should never be something we abuse, is it? So fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. And then we're told then, too, to serve him. Serve him wholeheartedly. The scripture, the heart is what? Is the, is the depth of our being. It's the wholeness of our being, of, of all that we are. It's our mind. It's our spirit. It's our emotions. It's our will. It's all of these things that we are to serve him with all of our being, wholeheartedly, not a, a half devotion or a double mindedness. Like how James speaks of double mindedness, doesn't he? When he says, when we ask of the Lord to ask, but don't be double minded, you know, being of, 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 of two different ways or minds of, of, of approaching or thinking, but rather to serve him wholeheartedly with one mind, a fullness of heart, a full devotion, all of our being, all of the time. So fear the Lord, serve him wholeheartedly with all of our being, all of the time. But then we're told what? To put away forever the idols of your heart. To put away forever the idols of your heart. Isn't it interesting now? It has been many years, many generations even, since their ancestors, since they have left behind the, beyond the Euphrates, and then they were in Egypt for many years. They were 400 years in Egypt. Now they're out of there. And yet here they are, all of these years later, the presence of the idols of their ancestors are still there among them. They've seen who God is. They've seen what God can do. They had heard the word of God. They had his promises. They had seen the miraculous provision of them for 40 years in the desert, and yet they still have the presence of the idols of their ancestors among them. I think that's hard to believe, right? But think about that. Have you seen God's faithfulness to you? Have you seen how he has provided for you? Have you seen what he's... Have you embraced that? And yet, we still have the presence of idolatrous influences among us that we give ourselves over to sometimes, don't we? Or to what? Put away forever the idols of our heart. So the idols of their ancestors still held a place among them. The influence of the pagan cultures was still around them. So ancestry and current cultural influences. And it's true that here in the church, the idols of our culture still hold a place in our hearts, don't they? The world, the flesh, the devil. But we must put them away forever. Put them away and then choose. Choose today whom you will serve. Will you serve the world, the flesh, and the devil? Will you conform yourself to the culture? Or will you be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the power of the word of God? Like this passage in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Paul is speaking here, and he says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So fear the Lord, serve him wholeheartedly, put away the idols of your heart, choose today then whom you will serve. So what? 
Well, I'll remind us where we started. I said, what? as we begin a new year then, let us resolve to put away unworthy affections and to serve the Lord. So as we reflect on this, I would ask, perhaps you need to receive God's forgiveness and cleansing. I do. I need that every day. And I want to remind us of this wonderful promise that we have in Scripture in 1 John 1, 1.9 that says, here, speaking to believers, John says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to do what? To forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That God promises when we confess. When we confess, it means what? To agree with God. When we agree with God about our sin, he will forgive us of that sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, not because of anything we've done, not because of anything I've done, but because of Christ and what he has done and the shedding of his blood for us. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Choose then today to serve God alone. Serve God alone. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus has won. Jesus has triumphed. He is the author of our faith, and he is the perfecter of our faith. Isn't that wonderful to know? Not only did he do what, we, what needed to be done to give us our faith and our standing before him, but he is perfecting it among us as well. He never quits on us, and I am so thankful for that. Seek God's direction for your life then today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. He will guide us through life to walk a straight path that honors him, a life of holiness and devotion to him. Finally then, let's pray then too to seek God's direction for our church as we begin a new year here, all kinds of possibilities are before us here. What would God have you to do? What would God have us to do as a church here in this community? Let's endeavor then to seek God's direction in this year for his church here then as well. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for the eternal hope that we have in Jesus. Thank you for the cleansing of his blood the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for the gift of righteousness given to us by faith. Lord, help us now to lay aside all those, those things that have held us back, to forget the past, to push forward with the new. Thank you for the cleansing of our hearts and our minds and our consciences through the blood of Jesus. Lord, we commit ourselves to you now in this new year. Have your way with us. Lord, we choose this day to serve you. We choose this day to put away the idols of our hearts and to serve you and to serve you alone. And we entrust ourselves to your purposes in our lives and in this church. Lord, be honored, be glorified in our lives. Be honored, be glorified in this church. Help us, Lord, to reflect the light and the love and the truth of Jesus Christ in this community. And we pray these things in his name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. As we respond, please stand. And the song that, uh, that we have for this closing of the service, is a, it reminds me as I was praying for, you know, how do we want to close our first service of the year? And um, I just want to remind you that God uses us in spite of our brokenness, in spite of what we, what we think we should have and what we don't have. He uses us. And um, 
he, he wants us to just make ourselves available. So I encourage you as we sing this song, as we're reminded that he, he'll choose to use anybody, and no matter what your, your gifting is, but be available. Why you ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong at the end of the line with all the other not quite. All that never get it right. But it turns out you're the ones we've been looking for all this time. Cause I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul and ever since you rescued me you gave my heart a song to sing i'm living for the world to see nobody but jesus i'm living for the world to see nobody but jesus well moses had stage fright and david brought a rock to a sword fight you picked 12 outsiders nobody would have chosen and you changed the world well the moral of the story is everybody's got a purpose so when i hear that devil start talking to me said who do you think you are i said i'm a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul and ever since you rescued me you gave my heart a song to sing i'm living for the world to see nobody but jesus i'm living for the world to see nobody but jesus so let me go down 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 in history as another blood-bought faithful member of his family and if they all forget my name well that's fine with me i'm living for the world to see nobody but jesus so let me go down 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 in history as another blood bought faithful member of his family and if they all forget my name well that's fine with me I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus Cause I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody Who saved my soul And ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for because I'm <laughs> gotta do that again. Cause I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. And ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Amen, amen. That's the plan. When you leave this place and you go have breakfast and you, you share with, your ch with each other and when you leave this place and go out into the world, your jobs, your homes, your communities, live for Jesus and let people know who, what, why is there something different about you in your walk with Christ? You're not perfect, but you're forgiven and they can be too. Let them know that. God bless you. Have a great new year. Amen. And now I want to invite all of you then to come to the brunch and the church family center there. I'm going to pray for that right now. After we pray then and we dismiss from here, you can go on in there and help yourself right away. We don't have to wait for everyone. So first come, first serve. So I'm going to be the first out the door. No. <laughs> all of you go on that there. So let's pray. Lord, we do thank you again for 
This time we've had to gather together as your people and entrust ourselves to you in this new year, Lord. May you be honored and glorified in our lives and in this church in this new year. May we forget what lies behind and press forward to what lies ahead. Lord, we thank you for the food we're about to have. Thank you for the hands that have prepared it. Lord, we now entrust ourselves to you this day, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.